Newton's Law of Gravity. Newton's question. You may have heard about an apple falling out of a tree and hitting Newton in the head. I really doubt that happened. But I do think that Newton was inspired by the fact that apples uh, do fall to the ground when they do break away from the tree. And I think he wondered uh, if an apple is pulled to the earth, if that force that causes that, uh, that force of gravity, uh, is it the same force uh, in structure and form as the force that pulls the moon around the earth? In other words, the moon is being pulled inward constantly around the earth. So is that force that pulls the moon around the earth, is that the same force that pulls an apple to the ground? Well, Isaac Newton knew a few things when he started pondering that question about the uh, apple and the moon. Um, he did his math quite differently than what I'm going to kind of go through here, but the main concepts were still the same, and the main concepts he knew quite well. Of course, he created a few of them, like his third law of motion. He knew that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and so for the earth and the moon, whatever force there was between them, those forces would be equal and opposite. In other words, the earth will pull on the moon the same amount that the moon pulls on the earth, but in opposite directions. It's kind of a crazy thought. We have a tough time seeing Newton's third law with the moon and the earth. And we have a tough time realizing that these forces really are equal, that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. The reason being is it's kind of confounding to us that if the forces are equal, why does the moon go around the earth and not the earth around the moon? Uh, and so when we look at it, what we have to realize is that the forces are equal, but force through Newton's second law, F equals MA, uh, the forces may be equal, but the accelerations are not equal because the masses are so different between the moon and the earth. The earth's mass is much, much greater than the moon's mass. In fact, it's about 81 times greater. That being the case, then uh, the moon accelerates a lot more around the earth than the earth accelerates around the moon. So when we look at F equals MA, the big mass of the earth times the tiny acceleration of the Earth is equal to the smaller mass of the Moon times the large acceleration of the Moon around the Earth. And so Newton uses second law of motion to understand that the Moon would go around the Earth and not the Earth around the Moon. Now the, the Earth does warble a little bit uh, because of the tug of the Moon, and we know because of ocean tides that the Moon is pulling on the Earth too. In Newton's second law of motion, F equals MA, uh, Newton knows that uh, force and, and mass go together. And then he also realized that if we were going to have equal and opposite forces here, that maybe the nature of these masses interacting is what is causing gravity. And so he believed that the force of gravity between the two is proportional. This sign means proportional to. It's a little fish kind of symbol. So he believed that the force of gravity is proportional to the product of the masses, the mass of the Earth times the mass of the Moon. Notice that in this case, if either of these masses got larger, then the force of gravity or the force of attraction between them would get larger. This math right here might make your head spin just like the Earth was spinning a moment ago. 
Don't freak out though, just follow me along and see if you can follow some of this logic. Now again, Newton didn't use this exact same methodology when he was uh, creating his universal law of gravity, but uh, he, he had this information at hand uh, in a little bit different format, and uh, um, I believe his thinking went along these lines. So Newton knew at his time Kepler, Johannes Kepler, created three laws of planetary motion by studying Mars very carefully and the astronomical uh, observations of Mars. And one of his laws of planetary motion was his third law that says the period of orbit of the planetary body, in this case the moon, the time it takes the moon to go around, a little more than 27 days, if you take that time and you square it, that's going to be equal to the radius, how far the moon is from the Earth, cubed divided by this k. This is called Kepler's constant. So this was Kepler's third law of planetary motion, and Newton knew it very well. Well, Newton also knew about accelerated motion uh, when something's going in circles. This is a particular kind of acceleration called centripetal acceleration, and that's the acceleration of a body going in a circular path because it's constantly being pulled inward. And this is one form of centripetal acceleration equation based on the radius and the period of rotation. So knowing this was centripetal acceleration, uh, Newton knew that there was radius involved and period squared involved in this equation. And that's what was happening. The moon is going around the Earth. So that being the case, if you can take r cubed over k here and plug it in for the t squared, because that's what it's equal to down here, you can crank through some crazy algebra, and what you end up with is that acceleration is proportional to uh, dividing by r squared. So knowing that, and knowing that f equals ma, Newton put his two ideas together, the product of the masses for the m part, and then the 1 over r squared, putting r squared in the denominator for the acceleration part. This number up here is just a number, and Newton believed that maybe that number is wrapped up in these masses, in the product of the masses. So this is what Newton ended up with for his idea for gravity. So that was Newton's guess, that the force of gravity between the Earth and the Moon is equal to the product or multiplication of their masses divided by the distance between them squared. Um, the unfortunate thing is Newton plugged in the numbers from the values that they knew. Of course these values in his time were way off. They didn't have very good numbers for these amounts. They had a pretty good number for the distance between the Earth and the Moon though, but these were way, way off, and so when he calculated it, it came nowhere near the guess that would have made the force of the apple be the same as the force between the Earth and the Moon. So he thought that his universal law of gravity was wrong. So poor Isaac Newton died thinking that his big achievement of uh, the idea of gravity was wrong. Um, and it wasn't until a little more than 100 years later that Henry Cavendish continued an experiment by John Mitchell, the geologist who had conceived this experiment. And uh, Henry Cavendish, in, the, in his backyard of his house in a, in a shed, uh, built this apparatus. And basically it's a torsion bar. It's a bar right here which is six feet long and it's holding up two... Uh, lead spheres here and that's free to turn and pivot and then rotate and then he had suspended two very large uh, 348 pound lead spheres opposite that he could turn and hold into a fixed location. The bottom line is he created an experiment that could actually see an attraction between objects. In this case an attraction between this small lead sphere and this one on this side and this a uh, large sphere and this small one on this side. Let's go ahead and take a look at Henry Cavendish's great experiment. When Cavendish did his experiment, he brought these large uh, lead spheres near the smaller lead spheres, and this sphere would attract to this one, and this one would attract to this one, and light that came in and hit a mirror would bounce off the mirror, and when there was attraction, the light beam would move along. 
he could measure how much the beam was deflected, how much it moved, and that would be proportional to how much the, the force of attraction was. And so he could do a direct measurement between this mass and this mass and the force of attraction between them. And he came up with uh, a validation of Newton's law of gravity by adding the factor big G. So the missing piece in what Newton was doing was this idea of uh, a proportionality constant, which we now call big G, the universal gravitational constant. In this video, you can see that uh, we have two uh, washers here on a paint stick, and it's they're suspended by a, a piece of line, fishing line you can't see here. But this is the torsion bar that can rotate. Now this side is going to be attracted to this rock, and this washer and weight on this side is going to be attracted to this rock. So this will pull this way, and this will pull this way, and it will rotate. So this is just a real life example of uh, Cavendish's experiment with ordinary stuff. We just have stuff here and stuff here, and we get a force of gravity and attraction. And you can see him moving. This is sped up. Uh, many, many times, I think about 300 times, so the force is not very strong, but it's definitely strong enough you can see that it is turning. So Cavendish's experiment did two things. He found the value for big G that we'll look at in here in a second, and he proved that Newton was correct, that stuff is attracted to stuff, whether that's an apple being attracted to the earth or the moon being attracted to the earth. So, Cavendish found out this constant, big G. Now, what you can see is big G is actually super tiny. It's a super tiny number. And it's got a weird unit, newtons meter squared over kilogram squared. Well, this, big, this tiny, tiny number is part of the reason Newton thought he was wrong. He didn't know about this tiny number that Cavendish found in his experiment. And uh, he also didn't have good values for the mass of the Earth and the mass of the Moon. Nevertheless, Cavendish... Uh, solidified Newton's law of gravity and uh, the weight of an object, the force due to gravity, is equal to big G times the mass of one object times the mass of the other object and divided by the distance between them squared. Now what that means is it doesn't have to be something like the moon and the earth, it could be like two people. Any two people are actually attracted to each other through gravity. But because big G is such a tiny, tiny number, that force of attraction between ordinary masses, stuff and stuff here, is really small since this is so small. So we don't feel gravity unless we have something like the Earth that's really, really massive pulling on us. And that is the law of gravity. So what does the law of gravity equation tell us? It tells us that any two things or any things with mass are attracted to each other. And so that is the big idea. And their attraction will get bigger and bigger if either or both of the masses gets bigger, then the overall force will get bigger. So if this mass doubles, then this force will double. If this also doubles, then this will go up four times. It also tells us that how far apart they are here matters. So the bigger the distance between them is, the less the pull of gravity is. And of course, the big G tells us, which is actually a small number, tells us that gravity is very, very weak force. The last thing to look at is how gravity dies down with distance. On the surface of the Earth, I'd weigh 180 pounds, and that's one Earth radius away from the center of the Earth. If I blasted off in a rocket ship and I was, was out here, two Earth radii away, two squared is four, so I divide by four, and my weight would drop down to 45 pounds. As I continue out, three squared is nine, so one-ninth of my weight it would be to 20 pounds out here, and if we continue on, I wouldn't be that far off the surface of the Earth out here, really, in relative to space, and my weight would drop all the way down to five pounds. So as I get further out here, I wouldn't be too far out till I'd be pretty close to weightless. And so you can see that gravity dies off quickly with distance. And Scratch's parting thought. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.